Hello guys, my name is Philip. I'm a Java developer, Python developer, and now also an IoT developer. And today we will talk about serverless application and serverless endpoints and APIs using Amazon Web Services. So we we'll use the API gateway for building and deploying our endpoints in the cloud. And we will also use the Lambda for, for executing our functions in the cloud and we will also use the DynamoDB that's, uh, that is the NoSQL database from Amazon so we will use all these services from Amazon Web Services and we will use also the Python language to, to, use, to make the function for Lambda. So our goal today is using Amazon Web Services to build a uh, serverless application and using in making HTTP requests to the endpoints that we will create an API gateway, we will be able to execute the Lambda functions, and the Lambda functions will insert or get records from DynamoDB. So summarizing what we are going to do, we are going to make an, an HTTP call to an endpoint that we will create on API gateway, this endpoint will trigger a Lambda function that we will use Python language to build it. And this Lambda function will insert or get some records from DynamoDB. So let's go to our example. And imagine that you have a Raspberry Pi and together with this Raspberry Pi you have a temperature sensor. And so this temperature sensor is measuring the, the temperature in ranges of one hour. So imagine that we want to save this temperature in the cloud. And what's the best way of saving these temperatures in the cloud? I think the best way is using API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB. So what we can do to save these temperatures in the, the cloud? So first of all, we will have to make an, an HTTP request to the endpoint that we have created in API Gateway. So passing the temperature as an information and the API Gateway will trigger the Lambda function that we will build using Python language. And the Lambda function will insert all the data, all the temperature that you, you were sent on the HTTP request in the DynamoDB. So it is important to say that we will pass the temperature, the device ID, and the even date time in the HTTP request as a JSON in the request body. So first we will make an a post HTTP request to save the temperature in the DynamoDB and after that we will make an a get HTTP request to get all the temperatures that we have saved in DynamoDB. So we will start at the first step that is making the table on the DynamoDB. So we will make a table with the temperature, device ID, and even date time column. And after that, we will jump to the Lambda function to, to make the, the, the post and get function. After that, we will go to API Gateway and deploy the, the endpoint. So now you are ready to go to the DynamoDB, so you must have logged on the Amazon Web Services Console, like am I here, we will have to go to DynamoDB on Amazon Web Services Console, and now you can hit the button to create a table, we will create a table called temperatures, temperatures, and the parti partition key of this table will be event date time and the uh, sort e will be device id so why you're using device id as a sort key so imagine that we have different raspberry piece or different devices that are saving the temperatures in the same table so we can use the device id to filter those the temperature of about some specific sensor so let's hit create the table is being created so let's wait a little bit until it's created yeah really easy so now you can jump to the lambda function
And now let's go to the Lambda Management Console. That's the Lambda Console. And here you can see that I don't have any function here. Uh, one thing that I you should take an attention is the, the available zone that you are located. In my case, that's Sao Paulo. But the, the DynamoDB table and the Lambda function has to be in the same available zone. So I will create in this zone. So hit the, just hit the button create function. My, our function name will be insert temperature. And we will use Python as we have talked. The, so put the, the last words on the Python. Um, here is the permissions. If, if you don't have created a permission in, the, in Ident Access Management Console, we have created, you can create it here. I will use uh, one that uh, already exists here. And I will create a function. I think that will take a little bit. Oh, that's okay. So now you are good to go to the Python code. And I have already written the Python code here. I will explain each line here. And remember that, that the Python code is available here and uh, attach it to this video and so in the first line we import the JSON dependence to handle JSON objects and the second line we are using Bodo tree this Bodo tree it's a uh, dependence from Amazon Web Services to handle all the all the process that we will do in DynamoDB so all the process like persistence creating or, or getting data from some DynamoDB table we, were, we will use the Bodo tree dependence. We are also using daytime to make our even daytime variable. So the first thing we, we can see here that we have a lambda handler and that method from Python and that's the default from, from the lambda methods. So you cannot modify this. We have to, to leave it here. So in this line we will we will instantiate instantiate the DynamoDB object, and we are not using this line, and we will, now we will instantiate our temperature table, uh, getting our DynamoDB object, and specifying that we want to get the temperature table. Now and after that, we will make our even daytime variable uh, using the the common daytime now that will bring the the current time to us, and using the strf time to format our date to string, so because we have to save as a string in our our database. After that, we will we'll get the device ID that was on JSON body. So every time that you want to get some information that was sent to us in the request body, like the some property of JSON, we'll have to use the even and the name of the, the property of JSON or property that we want to get. So we will receive the device ID from the Raspberry Pi. So we will get the device ID here. When we also also will receive the temperature, so we can get the temperature here. And now here is a simple try catch to when we will try to insert Eden on the on the database. And if everything goes well, will the the HTTP request will return in a 200 code with the message successfully insert the temperature. But if something goes wrong where we will receive a 400 HTTP code saying that we we had some error so when you're going to insert the Eden on the database we just have to get the table temperature object and call the method put item so we will put our item like it was like it is a JSON object and after that we can e execute our function now uh, we'll just copy and paste this entire piece of code here in the lambda console and the good thing about the lambda is that you can create test events I have, a cre I have already created mine here 
but you can create yours and I put the device ID, some random device ID of AES 123 the temperature of 225 uh, and I have already created and I can test now so just hit test and I can see that I successfully inserted the temperature and the console returned me the 200 HTTP call so if I go to the, the DynamoDB console and make a search here I will see that I have successfully inserted a new record in the database. So now, very good, we have already inserted the new record, the new temperature record on the DynamoDB table, and now we are ready to deploy our serverless endpoint. So let's go to API Gateway here. We'll hit get started. We'll make a REST protocol. So you can put the new API here. Our API will be temperature example. Example. You don't have to put a description. The endpoint type will be regional, and we are ready to create the API. And now in the API, we will first create the post method. So let's go to create a method hit and post and now we can integrate the post method with our lambda function that we have created so your lambda function has to be in the same available zone so if I type here you can see that I already located my insert temperature lambda function and now I can save that All right. And now we are have a read down the the post method and we can test here. Let's let's test. Let's get the the same request body that we we did on the the lambda test. So I will put the request body here and hit test. We can see that we successfully insert the temperature and if we go to the DynamoDB console we will have the same temperature but with a different timestamp here. And now that we have already inserted the temperature test in the post method we are able to deploy this method. So let's go to actions and deploy API. We can hit new stage. I will put TST stage, TST stage, and TST stage is, is just for example in tests here and hit deploy and we will receive a, uh, an endpoint here and we can test this endpoint to see if it's a red working I will use the RESTLAT extension from Chrome to do HTTP requests now we can see that I have a red and an endpoint here so I use this endpoint here and it will be the post request we have already a body here so I will test this API click on send when and we will receive the 200 HTTP code that the temperature was successfully inserted so if we go to the DynamoDB console and search again we will see that we successfully inserted the temperature so and you can use any any extension you want to test the HTTP request you can use Postman or any other tool so now we can use our, our deployed endpoint to to insert temperatures on the cloud on, in our DynamoDB so it's a red dome so let's go to the get matter now so first of all as we that's the same table we don't have to create another table so let's go to lambda management console and now we will we will create another function here we have already created the insert temperature function now we will create the function for the for, for getting all the temperatures so the name will be get temperature 
we will use the, the Python, the, the last version of Python. In, we'll select an existing role again. Will take a little time. Yes. Now, so I have already written the code again. So let's go to PyCharm, and that's a very simple piece of code. And I'm not using JSON anymore, so I will not put it here. Um, like I said, we are using Bodo Tree. That's the the Dynamo DB dependence for making gets or making selects or deletes or everything that we want to do in DynamoDB using Python. I think that's the best dependence. And in, in this line, we will instantiate the DynamoDB object. And the next line, we, we are instantiating the temperature object. And in this object, we will make a scan here. We will call the scan method and as we are taking all the temperatures that were stored in the table we don't have to put any filters here we just have to call the method scan so all the the, the data that that are in the table will be in the response as a, a JSON object and for return that we will have to put the sta status code the 200 for HTTP when everything is go well and uh, in the body we will get the response the items so when when someone does a get request on the endpoint it will receive all the temperatures that we have saved in the database so now let's just copy here copy and paste in the lambda console so now you're ready to test it let's save first and as we don't have a request body here we can create a, a test even with any information that we want I have already created so if I hit test I can see here in the ex execution result that I got all the temperatures that I have saved in the database so now you are good to go to the API gateway and test our get endpoint so now let's go to API gateway this stage here is the stage that we have deployed so we will have to, to delete this stage now we are cre we will create another method the get method that's very simple we will, we will hit just have to link with the lambda function that we have created that is the get temperature this function here that we have created let's go on save will take a little minute yes let's go to test we don't have a request body so let's just re hit test yes we can see that we have all the temperature here so it's working so now let's deploy the API again I will put the TST again TST and we'll deploy now we have the endpoint here I will cut the endpoint and put on the restlet and when I try to send the HTTP request I will get all the temperatures yes yeah, so now everything is running and we can use the the endpoint that we have deployed here for a lot of things we can even create the, the put and delete method for the HTTP request so here we are using the, an, an IoT environment example but you can use the API gateway uh, and lambda func functions with a lot of things so it's that's one of the powerful tools that developers have to to, to build and to deploy fast endpoints and fast APIs in the in the web and in the cloud so thank you all for watching this video and if you have any doubt you can contact me thank you